Hello, my friends, and welcome. Russia posted uh, the photos today of the destroyed armored vehicles that should belong to Ukraine. At first, I was like shocked. All right, two Humvees were totally demolished, but then I looked a little bit closer. I understood that they have just minor damages to the glass and to the front lines. Russia claimed that it happened in Belgrade region, the territory that was freed by the Russian Legion of Freedom. And the Russian army says that those vehicles were demolished because of the airstrike on the positions on the checkpoint. Yes, the buildings look similar to that checkpoint, but those buildings also exist on many of the Russian checkpoints. And this is the photo from the drone. It's cut, as you can see, in a very small square, so we are unable to identify this particular land on the map. And as you can see, the vehicles are pretty much okay. There is also the other Ukrainian-made vehicle as well. Here you can see no gun, nothing. This vehicle is just left somewhere on a dirt road. One more cat photo of the Humvee. So according to those, the Russian Legion of Freedom probably was drunk and they performed the drug racing on the dirt road over there and went into the trench that they were building before. Seems like very real scenario, don't you think? What I think happened there is that disinformation from our enemy. They do have some Humvees. They were able to capture them in Solodar and also in Bakhmut. I saw many of the videos before how Russians drive M113 armored vehicles and also Humvees. Also, let's zoom in a little to this vehicle. You can see a big cross, which is very non-standard, and the small one just near. But here we have the same vehicle, as you can see, the small cross, the big cross, but it already got some of the damages and bullet holes. But it was abandoned and filmed from the drone. Here you can see the same vehicle, the door is open, so it's abandoned. Why should you destroy the vehicle that you have already taken? And this one is also interesting. This Humvee is the different vehicle. It is used for the transportation of something. You can see some of the boxes just lying down in that area, and it seems like Humvee got some sort of the damages. But even though the roof went up, there is no visible penetration of the door or anywhere over here. Plus, there is the sign for Bakhmut, which means some sort of the revenge for Bakhmut, so the Legion came to Russian territory for that purpose, for revenge. So according to the Russian theory, these Humvees were demolished, they were on fire, our soldiers left them, and later on they took some sort of the paint, they came back to the very dangerous place and they painted for Bahmut on their vehicles. There is the other car very near and you can see the same letters over there as well. Painted on the car after the fire is over. The only vehicle that Russia might have captured in Belgrade area is this Max Pro American off-road truck. By the way, here you can see the General Lapin, who was responsible for Limon City defense, but they performed the goodwill gesture as usual. The story doesn't end here with this general. We're gonna see him in the video. So he is really a general. He went to the place to get some photo with American truck. Why he did it? For PR campaign. Russia wanted to show that they have the situation under their control, but they're unable to get it under control. That is why they start this PR campaign with all of the Humvees they have and all of the vehicles that they were able to trophy before. At least it's my opinion based on some facts. Russians reported that they've used aviation in the area. I also have great doubts about it. Because after they lost four of the aircraft last week, I don't think it's safe for them to fly close to Ukrainian border. And yesterday they lost one of the helicopters in that area. So yes, no signs of any artillery, nothing, no combat find, the vehicles are okay, I would say. And this is the General Lapin himself. He is on the front lines and he's ruling his forces. Just look at this video. It's the general. Come on. Follow me. <laughs> no. 
means forward, so general moves ahead of everyone. The vehicle, the armor vehicle, is behind him. He's the true leader like Mel Gibson from the Braveheart or something. Wow, that's great. But that was early morning time, Lapin was asleep, but during the daytime he switched into the berserk mode. Let's watch this video of his. He moves. He calls the soldiers. The soldiers were hiding from the Legion of Freedom. What is Legion of Freedom? Really nothing. I can go full forward with my height and no protection, no even guns. I don't need anything. I will destroy them with my look of the brave soldier. You can see. <laughs> you can see. <laughs> it's the Soviet flag on his shoulder. <laughs> oh, so here you can see why I think it's all hoax with those vehicles. Maybe they captured just one or two, who knows? But they presented it as their big victory. And Russian officials today said that they demolished all of the Legion of Freedom on the Belgrade territory causing them to retreat and after they retreated Russia used the artillery systems to demolish them on the Ukrainian territory. So everyone is gone, there is no more risk for Russians. But the Belgrade governor says that it's too early for civilians to return back to their homes. So if everything is okay, if everything is under control and there is no enemy any longer, why don't you let your own citizens to come to their homes? Huh, I guess I know why. Russian army needs the new washing machines. And while I'm recording this video, the huge explosion was reported in the Belgrade city. And locals just run into some sort of the mine. Here is the device itself, so it uh, exploded, causing the damages for their car, but everyone is okay over there. It wasn't that big explosion that I showed you before. And this is the Legion of Freedom, they filmed some sort of the videos today again on their channel. I posted everything of that on my Telegram channel, so my friends, I highly recommend you to check my Telegram in a video description just below, and I show something there that I cannot show you on YouTube. For example, Russia Today posted some sort of the videos and pictures of the people lying on the ground with a pixel uniform that is used in Ukrainian forces, but those people had no any stripes on their uniforms. Plus, Legion uses the different type of the uniform, it's not like the Ukrainian pixel one. I think that it's called multiplex or something, so it's not the pixel uniform, the same uniform you may find on every soldier of the Legion, so it's not the pixel art. Here also you can see there's no any pixel uniform. The guys are happy that they are in, this was filmed yesterday. But from today we know that there were some of the construction works in progress in the that area. So there are lots of the vehicles, lots of the soldiers. Uh, again, my friends, I want to state that I could be wrong with my outcome about those destroyed or damaged vehicles, it's better to say. We are in the situation of the informational war as well. The advancement to the Belgrade region, I think, was done to overlay the loss of the Bakhmut city. And now Russia tries to cover this information wave to their favor. But there is always the possibility, maybe Russians went to the place causing our, or it's better to say, Legion forces to leave that place. I think tomorrow we're gonna see it for sure, but for this time I am sure about my own thoughts just because of the stupid Russian PR campaign. Alright, let's go to Belgrade again. There is the car that was damaged by the explosion of the mine. As locals reported, the mine was dropped from the drone. 
There were some reports today from the social media resources that there were some other groups created that went into the Belgorod region as well. But so far I don't have proofs for that, so it could be the part of the informational war. But there's some signs reported in Kursk region today, so this is the flag, let's say, of the Russian Legion of Freedom. I think that the main idea was to cause the Russian army to put their own forces from Ukraine to Belgorod region. In that case, it would be much easier for Ukraine to start the counteroffensive. This morning we got the information that Russia started to send the forces from Donetsk region to take the bordering areas of Belgorod under their control again. I monitored this Legion of Freedom social media resources they say today that they got the fight in the area. Still, they claim that they don't have losses and they move in the captured area. Again, it's hard to say whether it's true or false because of the informational war. I think that you understand that this operation was conducted from the Ukrainian side. So there could be some Russians and today I saw the picture of one Belarusian fighter who is very famous and popular soldier in Ukraine. He got his own social media stuff but he went with those guys in Belgorod area. It was very risky for them and no one expected that the Russian army would just leave their positions. Totally, the Russian Legion of Freedom was able to liberate around 30 square kilometers of the territory. But, as you can see, it's very unstable. The fighting is ongoing with Russians. With bad Russians, as you see. The head of the Ukrainian intelligence, Kirillo Budanov, in his interview to NHK, the Japanese media resource, said that Ukraine got the minimum equipment to start the counteroffensive operation and it will be started very soon. We are all waiting for that and we believe in the forces, the armed forces of Ukraine and I'm sure that we will be successful with that mission. As practice shown, Russians are mostly running away. Okay, the official Russian reaction to the events in Belgorod uh, was presented by the speaker of Kremlin, Pest he said that Kremlin is deeply concerned. That's the only thing they say about Belgorod. Well, the ex-president Medvedev also commented on that issue today after probably hangover as usual. He said that the forces that entered the Russian Federation belong to Ukraine and they should not take prisoners. His usual rhetorics, nothing new here. If we speak about the Russian elite, there was the interesting case today with Putin. He met in Kremlin with some sort of the historical professor. I think he got something with his nerves. So this is the professor who say that I found the French map dated from long time ago and you know what Mr. Putin, there is no Ukraine on that map. And this guy showed uh, the map to Putin. So here's the map. It was Russia, Russia before, he says. Yes, I may agree. Yes, it was Russia and just communist gave the freedom, the country to Ukrainians. But actually, we didn't have any kind of the freedom uh, from the communists and Ukraine existed well before. And let's go to that particular map. This one, as you can see, it's very easy to find in Internet. This is really a French map that was created by Guillemot Sanson in 17th century. You may find it in the French National Library. It's available online. But here we have this name. Hopefully you'll see it. I maybe move a little bit. Uh, so, Ukraine pays the Cossacks. So, Ukraine, the country of Cossacks. There is also the Crimean Peninsula that calls Krimsky Tatarsky Krim that belonged to Tatars by that time. So, who is really responsible for the Russian PR? They have hands like this, probably. They cannot do anything. All of the information that they present may easily be checked on the internet. That is why they cut images, they fake, they try to fake it. But finally, internet does exist, even in Russia, and people may research the topic, as here. About the military map, everything stays the same as before, so there's the fighting ongoing in this particular area, and from the information we have from the resources responsible for the Legion of Freedom, the fight continues and they still control the place. 
As for the Bakhmut city, Wagner went to total defense and there is no movement also from the Ukrainian army, no big counterattack. Probably we took the break to get more weaponry and more soldiers to the area or maybe change the soldiers because at first Russians run but now they also send the reinforcements and they keep their positions especially in this area there's the crucial height that should be captured or it's better to say liberated by Ukrainian forces to get the opportunity to get Berhivka and Yahidne under control without it the further movement is not possible and we are all waiting for the possible counterattack on this territory my friends don't forget to press the like to this video and also if you want to support my job there are some links in the video description just below you may also support me on patreon or on the sponsorship on this youtube channel thank you so much for your awesome support and your help i wish you all a peaceful sky wherever you are and have a great time